everybody. Welcome, welcome to the VHS second annual tournament. And we got questions for VHS sitting right here with us. <laughs> Me and Tyrone, we're going to shoot some questions at him and uh, we're just going to kind of get some background of uh, everything about, you know, this life and the bowling itself. Um, let's jump right into question. Um, you know, how, how long have you been working at, at the rec center? Been there 30 years. 30 years? 30 years. Enjoyed 30 good years working with the uh, Mecklenburg County Parks and Recreation Department. <clears throat> so, Vernell, you, um, I believe, became the um, the rec center director at the age of 26. What um, made you take that job versus, you know? Well, back in the day, it was the city of Charlotte, not Mecklenburg County Parks and Rec. And back then, you worked on the playground. And if you did a very good job on the playground, then they moved you into the rec center. So after two years of working at Cherry Playground, they felt that they did a very good job. And they offered me the position at uh, Enderley Park Rec Center. Mm. <clears throat> so I, I was there. I enjoyed it. Came in as an assistant director and then worked my way up to being the director of Enderley Park Rec Center. When I was a little boy living in Smallwood, we walked up to this center called Enderley Park Rec Center. Uh, we had to leave out before it got dark <clears throat> to get home safe. I never knew that God would order my steps to that rec center to be the director. Um, so once I became the director, you know, it was like someone had to be there physically for these kids in the neighborhood, young women, young girls, uh, to tell them right from wrong, to go to their schools, talk to the teachers, make sure the grades was up to par. And I just took that up upon myself. <clears throat> and I thank Verdell H. Sanders was a father figure to countless young people during his career as the director of the Enderley Park Recreation Center. He touched the lives of multiple generations of families by giving of his time, talent, resources, and most importantly, his heart to young people who were seen as less than based solely on their zip code. It's just something that's in my heart. It's, it's something bestowed upon me, my mom, my dad, um, to help others. Um, to be there to just show a young kid <clears throat> wrong from right. You know, to have someone you can actually come, come uh, uh, share something with. You know, you got a problem going on in school. You got a problem in the community. Uh, you can have someone to talk to. And, and to help you with, you know, to put you on the right path. The main thing was, um, <clears throat> Brita gave us a place to go when we felt like home. That's the most important thing because some of us didn't have like fathers, you know. So he stood in as that father figure, and just the fact that him opening up that center, you know, um, a lot of people you couldn't go a lot of other places. There weren't a lot of safe places, but the center was safe. The center was a safe place, and my mom trusted, you know, further enough to have to, to let me go up there. So my mom knew who I was. But wasn't at the center. I'm at church. That's it. Church Center, that was, that was it. If I enjoy it, I enjoy it. If I go back, I do the same thing. That's right. Had a good time playing ball for Brady, you know, in the Park Rec Center. So, great experience. All right, as we prepare for the second annual VHS Bowling Tournament, I need you to purchase your tickets. We're going to have a blast. And now it's time for the VHS Trivia Question. Which area is located on both sides of the bowling lanes that a player wants to avoid? Is it called A, traps, B, holes, C, gutters? Put your answers in the comment below so you can win a prize at the VHS Bowling Tournament. After 30 years of service, the recreation center model began to change. Plans were made to build a new center, and Verdell was moved out of the EP community, much to the dismay of the EP residents. So what, what came first? Kids 
with the video games and staying in the house and, and, and being isolated uh, or, or being in the streets versus versus the sinners deciding to make everything a profit and yeah. sort of kicking out the kids. <clears throat> which which came first? And and regardless of which came first, I agree with you. I I feel like everything has changed and we've transitioned to to a different society. And like you're saying, it, it's just hard for single parents to to have to to pay for their kids to do stuff. I mean, it, it, it's it's a blessing. It was a blessing for us in our generation yes. to to, <clears throat> to have. You know, a, a person like yourself step in to be, you know, that leader sort of for the community and, and to be a father figure for for the kids that that truly needed one. <clears throat> and and I'm I'm sure all of them would testify that that definitely made a, made a difference. Um, today, everything is just too much business. It's too much about making money. Exactly. Um, and if if kids don't have if they don't have guidance, then they're going to go astray. They're, they're not going to choose right. the correct path without guidance. It's just not going to happen. They're going to choose the path of least resistance, the path that's, that they feel um, benefits them at, at that particular moment. Yeah. Instead of looking in, in the future, that's not what you know. That's not what a kid can do. They don't look into the future. So we definitely need somebody. It would be nice if, if these programs can be brought back um, just to give kids an uh, outlet. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Change is turned to where it's, I mean, they, you know, kicking the kids out because we got aerobics here, you know, or we got this right here, or we got this event, we got, and then it's like, you know, kids didn't really have anywhere where to go. So it's, you know, I, I'm grateful for my generation. And like Ty was saying, it, we had the rec center. You know, we had the rec center, and it was open, and they cared. It was more so having a compassion for people, you know, which is going to street now. But having compassion for people, you, You'll, you'll, you'll look out for your fellow brother. But, I mean, you know, it turned into a business. But I'm grateful that I had an opportunity <coughs> to, to experience, you know, in the Park Rec Center with, with Verdell as the director, you know, growing up, so it really helped me, mold me to a man I am today. So I'm, I'm grateful for it. They built a, they built a new center, and then they sort of transitioned from, from caring about the kids to making it a profit, a profit-wise organization. Um, do you think bringing back programs and stuff like that for, for the youth you think it's, it's too late or you think it's, we still have a chance to, to, to turn this around? <clears throat> you still have a chance to turn it around. The only thing is uh, now it's more of a business mm -hmm. than recreation for the kids and for the end of the park community. You know, a lot of single moms and it's hard for a parent to pay X amount of dollars for three kids to play, um, to have a safe place to play while they at work. Uh, so I don't think it, it'll ever go back to that. And I think that's why we're losing <clears throat> so many kids in the neighborhood because they just don't have that, that place to go. Well, I was saying, the, the main uh, thing uh, was, um, <clears throat> Britta gave us a place to go where we felt like home. That's the most important thing because some of us didn't have, like, fathers. You know, so he stood in as that father figure. And just the fact that him opening up that center, being, you know, um, a lot of people, he couldn't go a lot of other places. There weren't a lot of safe places, but the center was safe. The center was a safe place, and my mom trusted, you know, brother enough to have to, to let me go up there. So my mom knew who I was. Wasn't at the center, I'm at church. That's it. Church center. That was that was it. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. If I could go back, I'd do the same thing. That's right. I had a good time playing ball for Birdie, you know, in the department. So it's gonna be a lot of fun games at the tournament also, including Taboo, Scrabble, Uno. Now we're also gonna have spades. But there won't be any prize for that. That's right. It'll be no, just no, for no, fun. Space sharks, you come with me and get that. It's for fun. <clears throat> and let me add just one other thing. I need all of my Ram bowlers, all bowlers that went to Winston Salem State University. Yeah, I need state. you to come out because last year the tournament was won by an alumni of A&T <laughs> State <laughs> University. Bag it, baby. So I need, I need all my Ram bowlers to come out. It's you! <laughs>
period. Bowling. It's just, it's fun. So me and my wife um, started doing years and years ago, and I, I started first, and then she came along, and we, we just love it. We love to bowl and love to travel. Love it. It used to be basketball, right? But you retired retire lately. Basketball. You can't recently. go along with that. But um, <laughs> bowling, you can bowl to your 100 years old. <laughs> Just down that road. Shoot, you, you just need a hand. That's but the truth. Yeah, love, love bowling. Love bowling is fun. That's my favorite sport now. 20 years ago, maybe not. But now it is. All right, all right. Also, Ty, what's yours? Well, believe it or not, my favorite um, game is chess. Um, mm. On, on chess.com, I've played about, probably about 85,000 games. Mm. Um, and probably on old Yahoo, probably half a million. Uh, I do the one minute speed game. Yeah, I'm, I'm awesome at that. But once you once you slow me down to a 30, 40 minute game, you know, my skills ain't, ain't adequate. But yeah, I love speed chess. And, and second right. place, I would probably say it, it's Scrabble. I've only lost two games one on one in the last 20 years. Awesome. V, we might have to go on, on all right. one on one. All right, all right. I, I do EP have, versus EP. <laughs> I do have the deluxe game at the house. Deluxe. I got the deluxe and the travel set. Yes, yes. My wife and I play it religiously, yes. I couldn't tell you, because I know he's too competitive. And oh, yes, yes, yes. We got a lot of our competitors from him, so I, I couldn't really, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. I'm going to say this. If we were playing spades, I would say Tyrone. I would say Tyrone. <laughs> I would say Tyrone. Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball, I would give it to me. Yes, yes. Face Tyrone. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree, yeah. yeah. Uh, by chance, has anybody seen the big joker? I, I can't seem to find it. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> For the longest, I've just been playing ball just to stay in shape. So I, I'm not really competitive with that. And, and even when I was younger, I like to win, but, you know, I, I, I like to win, but I just love playing, you know, playing with Tracy because, you know, when you're playing with someone that, that can play, they make you even look even better than, than what you actually are. And I mean, you know, our, our record is, was, was impeccable because uh, when, when it was a, a shot needed to be made, a go-to man, hey, that, that was a man. But on the space thing, what he said, if you come and play space, please be honest. If you can't play, yeah. just be honest. I've made, I've made a <laughs> couple girlfriends cry coming, coming over and because saying you, they can play. You, yeah, we know it's By accident now. Yeah. If you say you can play, do that. But if you can't play, be honest, because it will show. <laughs> now I ask them now, rank your skills from one to 10 on spades. If they say anything less than an eight, I don't even want to play with you. <laughs>
for that neighborhood, for that community. Uh, it was awesome. So it was something I really enjoyed. So what do you want your living legacy to be? Um, I just want the people, the kids, the end of the park community to know there was someone there that actually cared about them, not just there for a job. I wasn't about the paycheck, it was actually caring. Um, because for every, every person that came into that rec center, I had to know the parents. I had to know the family. <clears throat> I had to go to the house uh, to make sure that the parents felt okay, they, they had confidence in me being there uh, with a son or daughter. So, you know, just knowing that I, I cared about him. Uh, he's willing to go way beyond his job to, to make sure someone is okay. Was there somebody in, in your childhood that <clears throat> sort of represented that also? Like, like a normal person <clears throat> just wouldn't, I don't think, take on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I would think someone, maybe was there someone in your childhood or someone growing up um, or maybe even your dad that, that <clears throat> installed this in, in you or, or led you down that path to, to, to wanting <clears throat> to put other people first and, 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 and try to help other people out? I came from what we call Old Greenville. That was a rough neighborhood. We had what you call big brothers. <clears throat> These were older guys <clears throat> and they took on that responsibility to make sure you walk the right path in life. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Um, and it just started from there, you know, being with my, my grandfather, you know, my mom, um, and these young men, they just took on that responsibility uh, to make sure that the young kids had a place to play. Uh, one young man, he had a, a goal in his backyard. He allowed us to play ball. Uh, so, and that's pretty much where it came from, uh, just having some, someone there to guide me, and it just stuck with me, having talks with my mom, having talks with my dad about life in general, uh, so that's where it started from, and then uh, getting a scholarship to um, once the Salem State University, <clears throat> and I had the opportunity, once again, I had upperclassmen to help me along the way, and it just stuck with me. It just stuck with me. So uh, that's where a lot of that came from. And the different people that I, that I met along the way, <clears throat> you know, your parents, Tracy's parents, uh, just guided me, you know, because I don't feel that no parent would let their kid go to that rec center if they didn't know me personally. It was sad that that retirement day came. Uh, I had to leave, but you know, it was fun, it was great. It was a great experience to see the livelihood of these young kids grow into young men, the livelihood of the young ladies grow into young, you know, young girls growing into young ladies. Um, some of them had their own businesses, like Tyrone, and, <clears throat> and it, it was just an honor that I can say, you know, back then, you know, I saw where they started from and I see where they are now, and, and that means a lot to me.